This is the story of a bar top. Not just any old bar top. A long-term build project. You can see the date that we started milling this. May of 2020. 19 months ago. This log had actually been on the ground for almost two years before it was milled. So we hired the sawyers, farm to market furniture, helped us mill it up. We picked out this pecan piece and decided it was just the right size. So after cutting it, milling it, we let it set in the barn for over a year to dry before we were to move it to Dallas. So that's the next step. So my first stop was to take it to a yard to have it milled. There's nothing better than having other people load your heavy piece of, a, of lumber to be able to mill it up. Well, when you see these guys working, trying to get this piece of lumber loaded through their machine, you understand why I hired this part of the job out. Because it would have taken me days or weeks, possibly months, to be able to do it myself. But sure enough, they managed to get it through the machine several times to be able to get it smooth enough, even sanded down to about a 120 finish. So here's the pecan piece that I'm going to make a bar top out of. <laughs> About 10 and a half, 11 inches wide. A little over five inches thick. And it's currently about 12 feet long. So visiting with my son-in-law, we decided he wanted something about seven feet. So I'm going to see if I can carve out the portion to get a good seven feet out of this. So this has a little checking in here for this seam. So I'm probably going to cut it off right here. And down at the other end, we have a big old bark inclusion here. And it's kind of punky and soft. So I'm probably going to cut this about right here and get the seven, best seven feet out of it I can. So that's the task at hand. So in this piece, I'm marking the cut lines on the piece because it's important to be able to mark tops, bottom, and the sides with your lines. So as you make your cut, you can stay on the line to have it smooth so you don't have a whole lot of rough edges to have to deal with later. So I'm cutting both of the top pieces before I turn it over to be able to cut the underneath side. Since I was cutting this piece off and it is reasonably heavy, I asked Nathan, my neighbor, to come over and help me on the cut so we didn't just drop it on somebody's foot. So as I cut through the line, you'll see that the thing came out nice and smooth and he was able to nicely set it on the ground without any hurt toes. And we moved on to cutting the other end. Same process, same procedure, same results. On the underside of the table, we got quite a few wormholes. I Here, got it this Here's Ballard Christmas. digging in to see if he got any worms in that hole. Okay, let's try different holes. See if you can find anything in theirs. Okay, in an attempt to get these bugs out this hole, we blew canned air in there to make sure that they were eating, and they were. were. So we used our syringe and squirted mineral spirits in here, either to make them drunk or to kill them. One of the two. Since his bar top was going into Ballard's house, he wanted to be sure and leave a message for the bugs. So on this piece, I have a number of cracks and wormholes. So I'm gonna put CA glue in the cracks and I'm gonna fill wormholes with colored 
material. So I bought eight ounces of super glue and I'm just filling the cracks. Then we got out the belt sander and my neighbor Nathan helped me take it through the sanding grid. 60, 80, 120, and 220 on all four sides. It took a while, but it sure looked good. The next step was to fill the holes, the wormholes. We used our knot filler polymer from Knot Tech and the heat gun that heats up the polymer to fill up all the knots and all the holes in our piece. This process is pretty neat. You just squeeze like you're shooting glue in there and you use this little aluminum block to cool it off and make it hard and make it flat and then you can come along and just scrape it off so you just continue to shoot the glue or polymer into the hole when you get a fill you slap the aluminum block it cools it off and on to the next one so we're using the knot tech glue repair knot filler put it in the hole dug it that's a little hot you put your aluminum block on it to cool it off the immediate touch and then you come in here be plain and just slice it off probably need to cool a little bit more on that one we'll let these other guys cool yeah it turned out nice so after all the cracks were filled with CA glue and the wormholes were, were filled with knot tech, we put a little half inch round over on all the corners. Sometimes you look real close, you'll see this little bitty line that you can see after the round over. You want to sand that smooth so your round over is there and you can see it without that line. So that gives a nice finishing touch to the look knowing you have a nice smooth round over on both edges. So now I have the first coat. This is what I'm using. Rock hard tabletop urethane varnish from Mohawk. Bought it Rockler. This is the first coat on the top. So it says let it flow and don't brush it. So we've got a few little air bubbles in here. Hopefully they will go away after. See some right in there. But we're not gonna brush it. Maybe we have to sand those out. So some of the areas like up in here already look like they're drying. They've actually absorbed the finish because it's a lot drier portion. So, so here's the piece after four coats of finish. All right, so here's the bar top behind the couch. Here's the media room for the Hurt family. And there's Master Hurt enjoying his new bar top. Cheers. <laughs>